Hi everybody and welcome to another piano video here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. Today we're exploring all of the Roland weighted 88 note actions that are out in production and circulating amongst its FP line, LX line, HP line, and RP and F series. So this is gonna be the PHA4, PHA50, and their hybrid grand action. We're gonna talk about the various features and differences between them. Um, I'm gonna describe what it's like uh, for me as a player to play on all three of these, uh, and then uh, give you a full listing of all the models that use these three actions. So thank you so much for joining us. If it's the first time that you're seeing us here on YouTube, thanks so much for stopping in and saying hi. If you enjoy what you see or find it useful in any way, we'd really appreciate if you hit that subscribe and notification bell. It helps us a lot here on the channel to keep growing, uh, but it also lets you know every time we come out with a new video, which you might want to watch. Without further ado then, let's dive right in with Roland's weighted 88 piano actions right away. So as we said in the intro, the purpose of this video is to walk you through the three actions that Roland currently offers on all of its digital pianos and full 88 note digital uh, portables and synthesizers. Uh, they are in order from the uh, lowest sophistication or cost up to the highest, the PHA4, which is on uh, the right side, the middle, the PHA50, and then uh, the most recent and the one that has the fewest number of instances uh, is the hybrid grand action. So what really separates these three and what are the characteristics that you can expect when you're playing on them? And lastly, which instruments will you find these uh, actions on? So the biggest single difference between all three of these actions isn't necessarily what you might expect. You would think maybe it's the materials or that it's some uh, difference in how the hammer or the design works. It's actually something very straightforward and it is the pivot length. Now, what do we mean when we say pivot length? Well, that is the distance between the front of the key to the point at which the, the key is hinged, uh, where it sort of rotates on, uh, on itself, on a, on a bit of an axis or a, you know, a fulcrum. Uh, and the reason that that is such a huge factor for actions is that is what uh, determines how much motion there is uh, at the front of the key versus the middle of the key uh, and really how uh, much of a gradient there's going to be in the change in behavior uh, depending on how far out or in on the action uh, you were playing. It also has a major influence in the sense of weight and the sense of depth to the key, the, the, more, uh, the, the longer the pivot length, uh, it tends to create a, a greater sense of control uh, and there is less difference between the dynamic and the static weight normally uh, when you lengthen that key. So uh, that pivot length really has a major influence over the feel of the key. And so as we look at all three of those, you can see that the pivot length keeps getting longer. This is the PHE 50 that we're looking at right now. And of course, by the time we get over to the hybrid grand action, that pivot length is actually starting to get into a very similar range to what you'd find on some six and seven foot acoustic grand pianos. So pivot length is definitely one of the differences that you are going to see between these three. The second is going to be materials. Um, if you notice on the side of a PHA4 action, uh, this is an all plastic action. Uh, and so that means that the top key surface is plastic, the side of it is plastic, uh, and the, the counterweight uh, or the moving hammer uh, is also plastic. There's obviously some metal parts. There are uh, some electronic components in here, but all of the main uh, components here are made of plastic. When you get over into the PHA50 and the hybrid grand action, you're gonna see that on the side of the main key, 
uh, this is actually uh, now wood. Now, this is, and uh, Roland isn't the only one who has used this technique, Yamaha also does. Uh, and there's always been those who have said, well, this is nothing but aesthetics. This doesn't actually change anything. Uh, there is an argument uh, to be made that by using wood and the real material that a normal key actually would use, uh, rather than plastic or uh, uh, supplementing it with other weighted material uh, that would be smaller and more concentrated somewhere, uh, such as a lead weight or a, or a steel weight, um, that you're better simulating the dynamic feel of the key uh, because you're actually using wood for the purpose of, of adding mass, adding bulk to the key. I don't know how you'd ever test that, but at least that is the theory. Uh, and I know for sure that as piano players, we love looking at the side of that key and feeling like there's some type of a natural material in there. So wood is a major difference as you go from PHA4 up to the PHA50, and that's retained on the hybrid grand action. The third difference is going to be uh, what they call the stabilizing pin. And so this is a pin right in the top and the middle of all of the keys uh, that sits vertically. And it really serves the same function uh, as the balance rail pin does on a real acoustic piano. So yes, that uh, kind of allows you to align the key uh, laterally, but it also provides a huge amount of strength in terms of making sure that the key uh, isn't twisting or, or kind of torquing over to one side or another. So as you're applying force on the key that isn't immediately straight down, because that's something that we often forget as piano players is the force that you're applying to a key is not always perpendicular to the key. Um, there's a lot of times where you are lunging at a key from the side and applying an enormous amount of pressure that's, that's sort of tipping or twisting the key over. And of course, that's before you get into any of those really hammy, but you know, sometimes appropriate glissandos up and down that puts a huge amount of pressure. In fact, I was just on a gig the other day and broke off the top of a black note on a piano that they had just restored. I felt terrible about it, but it wasn't an uh, sort of an uncharacteristic um, move on my part. It's just, um, if anything, a great example of just how much force uh, keys actually receive. So that uh, center pin is there to protect the key and add durability. It's less about the feel and it's more about the durability of the action. So that is not present on the PHA4, it is on the PHA50 uh, and on the Hybrid Grand. Now all three of these actions use a triple sensor. So there isn't gonna be an enormous amount of difference in the quality of the MIDI output, although one could argue that the longer the pivot length, again, you're just increasing the level of control. So by virtue of the fact that as a player, you can manipulate the key with a little more accuracy with a longer pivot length, the MIDI information might be more accurate, but the sensor itself is not what is going to dictate that level of accuracy. And lastly, there's actually a difference in the finish. Um, now, the white keys on all three actions uh, use a very, very similar material. In fact, I'm not able to detect that there is a difference. So it could be that they're exactly identical. However, there is a difference in the black key. So on the black key material on the PHA4, uh, it's a bit of a satin finish. There is a very slight texture to it, uh, a kind of a porous texture uh, that does give it a bit of a feel like you're playing on a real ebony key. Um, but when you get over to the PHA50 and the Hybrid Grand, um, that uh, uh, texture actually becomes a lot more visible and you can really see that there's a bit of a wood grain there uh, on the black keys. As I said, the white keys in all of those instances actually stays the same. So now let's talk about the experience of playing all three of these actions. The PHA4 is a little different than the others in that the static resistance on the PHA4 is actually a little higher than the dynamic resistance. And that's even more extreme when you first get it out of the box. So for people out there who are getting instruments or thinking about getting instruments with that PHA4 action, there's actually a bit of a break-in period uh, on that action where you're going to find that the, the uh, static resistance and dynamic resistance will actually slowly close the gap. But even once you've broken an instrument in, there still tends to be about a 10 gram weight difference between what it 
takes to get the key in motion and then what it actually requires to uh, press the key down and, and get a nice uh, full tone out of the key or sensor uh, as it were. So um, we just did a video where we were actually comparing um, a HP 702 with a Casio uh, 710, um, AP 710. And on the HP 702, which had not been broken in, some of those keys were actually above a 65 gram weight uh, to get the key in motion. Um, I often play on a Roland FP60X as well as an RD2000, which uses the uh, PHA4 and PHA50 respectively. And now that that's been broken in, uh, most of those keys are in and around the 65 uh, gram weight to get it in motion and uh, in the low 50s once it's, once it's there. My observation is that for people who are more uh, in the pop realm, jazz realm, uh, this reduces the number of uh, false strikes or false notes um, where if you're kind of improvising or moving around quite quickly and it's a less of a planned motion, um, if you glance over key, it's less likely to activate uh, than one where you're actually going with some intention. Whereas classical, uh, you actually want the keys to uh, you know, behave exactly as it is. It's a little more of a pre-planned uh, experience playing, uh, and some people are not going to want uh, that little extra uh, inertia uh, to overcome. You don't have that on the PHA50 or the Hybrid Grand Action, so that's one of the differences uh, that you're going to notice. Second, that stabilizing pin, you really can actually feel uh, for better or for worse, on the 50 and the Grand Hybrid. There is literally no give, or there's a lot less lateral give on the two hybrid actions, I guess Roland would probably refer to it as, whereas you do have a bit of uh, lateral give, or more lateral give, uh, shall we say, on the PHA4. So, again, this is really just personal preference, but something uh, to be aware of. If you are a, a really aggressive player, uh, and you think you're going to be putting the instrument under quite a bit of uh, physical tension, um, that stabilizing pin uh, is going to just give the entire keyboard a slightly more firm feel. The last characteristic I'll mention on the PHA4 before we move on is that you do have a sense that it is a slightly deeper key bed. Uh, now, part of this is psychological because of that uh, difference in the dynamic versus static resistance. Um, but if you're somebody who really likes to lay into a keyboard and play quite dynamically, um, the sense of a slightly different or a slightly deeper keybed could actually be quite satisfying and give you a, a greater sense of control over what's going on. So moving on to the PHA50, uh, this is an action which feels quite a bit different than the PHA4, uh, and in certain contexts actually feels lighter, even though you've added a little more weight to the to the hammer uh, and the pivot length is longer. But the actual uh, dynamic and static resistance of the key um, is uh, slightly lower than what you get on the PHA4. So the reason to do it isn't that you're trying to get a heavier action. The reason to go with a PHA50 is actually going to be because you are playing a wider variety of music and you need a little more uh, evenness uh, in, the, in the resistance from the front to the back of the key. So somebody who's really into classical is probably going to feel a lot more at home and uh, a lot more uh, at ease uh, on a PHA50 because of that extended uh, pivot length. And then as we move into the hybrid grand action, this is honestly just a stretched version of the PHA50. There's really no new technology that's been added to this. It's just a longer pivot length. So everything that you liked about the PHA50, you're just going to get more of that. Even less of a difference between the front to the middle of uh, the key uh, in terms of the resistance that that's going to uh, require. Uh, you are going to uh, probably uh, be dealing with a slightly slower uh, repetition speed on the Grand Hybrid action versus the PHA50, but not likely very noticeable except for the most uh, advanced players. So 
So finally, let's quickly talk about which instruments uh, in Roland's lineup have which actions. The PHA-4 is available on all of the FP series uh, except the FP-90X, so FP-10 in some countries where it's still available, FP-30X, FP-60X uses this. Um, the RP-701, the F-701 also uses this, the RD-88 uh, is using this, and the newer Phantom-08 uh, is uh, using this as well. And getting into the HP series, the first HP, the 702, also uses the Roland uh, PHA-4. Now into the PHA-50, uh, the top FP-90X uses the PHA-50, the DP-603 uses the PHA-50, the top uh, Phantom-8, not the 08, but the 8, uses the PHA-50, the Keola KF-10, which is a model that some Roland dealers uh, offer, uses the PHA-50, and then uh, the HP-704 and the LX-705 uh, use the PHA-50, as well as both of their GP uh, grand pianos. So that's going to be the GP-607 and GP-609. Finally, the Grand Hybrid keyboard is currently only available on two models, which is the LX706 and the LX708. I have a feeling uh, that when we see subsequent Grand Piano models come out in the future, I'm not expecting that for still another couple of years from Roland, but when we do see a refresh, uh, I would not be at all surprised to see the Hybrid Grand Action make it on to those Grand Pianos, but currently only available on two. Now, Roland does have semi-weighted actions uh, and you know, more traditional keyboard spring-loaded actions uh, on some of their synthesizers, which are shorter than 88 notes. This video is not even pretending to, to cover those. This really is just a full summary of everything that's got fully weighted 88 note action from Roland in all its various forms. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this has helped. If anyone had any questions about uh, which action was going in which instrument and what some of the more specific differences were between them, uh, if you enjoyed what you saw or you found it helpful, we'd really appreciate if you subscribed and hit that notification button because we'd love to see you back. Please leave a comment. Let us know what you thought of the video as well. My name is Stu Harrison. This has been Miriam Pianos on YouTube, and we'll see you again soon. <laughs>